Tonight on EKB Evening News at 6, motorists can call the safe patrol when they run into trouble. Good evening, I'm Gary Sloan. And I'm Jill Fraley Dotson. Cindy has the night off. We will bring you the safe patrol story in just a moment, but first we have this developing story. Floyd County residents Brian and Melissa Hall never expected to see what they did this afternoon in the middle of the Floyd County Road. It was a baby. Now the tales are still coming in, but we were able to speak with the Halls over the phone a few minutes ago. Melissa Hall told us she and her husband saw what they first thought was a dog in the road on Bucks Branch and Martin in a heavy rainstorm. The couple scooped up the baby boy and put him in the vehicle and began to try to calm him down and dry him off. She further said they honked the horn several times in an effort to alert neighbors and locate the child's family, but nobody came outside. That is when they called 911. KSP commercial vehicle enforcement officers were the first to arrive on the scene. Uh, this time what we've got so far is uh, around 1.30 p.m. Uh, this evening, we received a call uh, from Post 9 Pikeville the stating that a passerby uh, uh, actually has found a infant crawling in the roadway on 122 in the Martin area of Floyd County. Uh, from that point, uh, officers arrived, CV officers arrived on scene, uh, and then also EMS arrived with them, and then from the investigation part, we actually end up uh, arresting the, the grandma, the Tammy Cooper, 48 years of age, also a Martin. And from the charges standing from this, it would be a one endangerment second. Uh, from that point, she was transported to the Floyd County Jail. We are continuing to follow this story and we'll bring you more details as they become available. We are a week away from Memorial Day and the traditional start of the summer travel season. But if you're out on the road and experience car trouble, what do you do? If you're traveling on certain highways throughout the state, the Safe Patrol is there to help. EKB News reporter Shannon Deskins caught up with the patrol and filed this report. As the summer driving season gets underway, more and more vehicles will be traveling across the state of Kentucky. And for motorists who run out of gas, have a flat tire, or otherwise find themselves stranded on one of the state's major roadways, a Safe Patrol operator may be dispatched to get you back on the road. We've all seen these trucks driving up and down the highway, but many of us aren't aware of the valuable services they provide. We're a roadside assistance program. Uh, we do mostly interstates, parkways, and you know, four lane highways. We just travel up and down the road or we're just dispatched out to people that have flat tires or broken down or anybody that we can assist. We do minor repairs and we try to get them back on the road. The Safe Patrol is part of the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet's Division of Incident Management and is a completely free service to motorists. Of the 22 Safe Patrol trucks throughout the state, two are dedicated to patrolling over 200 miles of roadway here in eastern Kentucky. My route is uh, US 23. I run to the Virginia line going south and to I-64 at Catlicksburg going north and Route 80 to Hazard. If you ever find yourself sitting on the side of one of these roads throughout our region, Kentrell says they are only a phone call away. Most people when, when we stop and help them and they find out about the service, they go ahead and put the number in their phone. That way if they need assistance, they can go directly to our dispatch and we can get to them. From your cell phone, you can dial 511 or contact a dispatcher directly by calling the number on the screen. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shannon Deskins. A routine safety checkpoint Friday night led to a drug arrest by the Floyd County Sheriff's Office. Deputies were conducting the roadblock along Route 680 near McDowell when David Sean Kilgore Jr. came through. During that stop, Kilgore was allegedly found in possession of marijuana, scales, cash, and drug paraphernalia. He was arrested and promptly charged with trafficking in marijuana and possession of drug paraphernalia. Two people were arrested this morning after police found them inside a display storage building at Lowe's in Pikeville. Police were called to the store around 8 a.m. There they found 32-year-old Elizabeth Bennett of Elkhorn City naked inside the storage building, 
Also in the building was 34-year-old James Rowe, also of Elkhorn City. According to a police report, Rowe allegedly had something in his hand and would not open it. When he was restrained, officers found it was a small plastic bag containing what appeared to be an unidentified narcotic. Bennett reportedly told police that she and Bennett were homeless. According to the police report, Bennett showed signs of slurred speech and had difficulty completing sentences. Both were arrested and placed in the Pike County Detention Center. Bennett was charged with indecent exposure and public intoxication. Rowe was charged with possession of a controlled substance and resisting arrest. Police also discovered warrants for Rowe for second degree robbery and being a persistent felony offender. Coming up, Elkhorn City held its annual Apple Blossom Festival over the weekend. And Matewan hosted the annual reenactment of a dark day in its history. We'll be back in two minutes. The Matewan Drama Group on Saturday revisited a dark period of Appalachian history presenting the 15th annual reenactment of the Matewan Massacre. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele was there and brings us this report. The Matewan Massacre is described as a shootout in the town of Matewan, West Virginia. During the 1920s, coal miners worked long hours in unsafe conditions while being paid low wages. A few months before the massacre, President of the United Mine Workers of America, John Lewis, planned to organize the coal fields of southern Appalachia. Roughly 3,000 men signed the union's roster. Stone Mountain Coal Corporation fought back with mass firings, harassment, and evictions. Saturday, the Mate One Drama Group presented its 15th annual reenactment of the Mate One Massacre in the streets of downtown Mate One. Union Mine Workers of America President Cecil Roberts says this is something that needs to be shared with future generations. This is our history, this is our culture, it should be celebrated, it should be remembered, and we should educate the next generation as to what went on here in 1920. Director of the Mate One Drama Group, Donna Paterino, says if those who know the stories don't pass them along, who will? If we don't pass the history on, our young people will forget. They'll never know what happened if we don't teach them the rich history of our coal, coal mining families and the early struggles that they had. We recreate every event that happened on that faithful day in May 19, 1920. Board member Wilma Lee Steele says she hopes more people catch on to what the Mate One Drama Group is doing. They do it because they love our history, and that's what it takes. I think that when you get one group that just won't quit, that loves their history and loves their community, that it spreads, it catches like a fire. The Mate One Massacre reenactment had travelers as far as Wisconsin join in on the fun. He says he's learned a few things. It's a very lovely area. It's one way of preserving history out of your own state where Wisconsin, we have mining, but ours is lead and copper. Uh, so we're learning new coal mining ideas from your folks viewpoint versus what we know and it's very nice. The event was free but accepted donations if offered. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shelby Steele. In connection with the reenactment of the Mate One Massacre, the West Virginia Mine Wars Muse Museum held its grand opening Saturday in downtown Mate One. In 2013, a group of volunteers came together to build a museum that explains the West Virginia Mine Wars a dramatic but often overlooked piece of American history. On Saturday, those volunteers saw their vision come to life. Board member Lou Martin tells us what the West Virginia Mine Wars has to offer. Inside the museum, we have artifacts from the mine wars, such as shell casings and even a Winchester rifle from the Battle of Blair Mountain. We also have a lot of photographs, historical photographs, and some oral history interviews that will play over speakers. And so the purpose is to tell the story of the West Virginia Mine Wars, which started in 1912 and ended in 1921. This was a period that the, the miners were trying to unionize. The new West Virginia Mine Wars Museum preserves and interprets artifacts and historical records of the local communities affected by the mine wars, exploring historical events through the lives of ordinary people. The doors opened at 10 a.m. just before the outdoor reenactment and closed at 5 p.m. just in time for the free dinner at the Union Hall in downtown Matewan. 
The Apple Blossom Festival came to a close on Saturday after three days of fun. Since 1976, the Apple Blossom Festival in Elkhorn City has celebrated springtime in the mountains. In 2013, the festival was moved to Main Street in an effort to revitalize the festival. The festival offers something for everyone with over 30 vendors along the food and gifts. Jason Foley with Kentucky Whitewater says this is something that Elkhorn City needs in order to boost tourism. As you know, Elkhorn City uh, has relied on other industries for many years, and uh, there's a really good group of people here in town working on making sure that uh, we're going to enhance uh, the natural resources that are here and use them to our advantage. So things like using the trails, uh, using the river, and things like that are key for the future of, of the people who want to visit here. Live music featuring local area talent was provided throughout the festival. A parade also was held in honor of the local Shriners Club. Coming up, it's tournament time for high school baseball. Jamie Johnson will be in with a preview. But first, EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins will be in with our first look at this week's weather forecast. We'll be back in two minutes. Much of our region saw some showers today, pop-up showers, but overall it was a fairly nice day. Some locally heavy downpours made their way across the region, believe it or not, and we were just talking a minute ago, downtown Pikeville, nothing. not a nothing, but I still think we still have a good chance of picking up a couple rain showers before this night is out. Doppler radar showing why we still have a few showers making their way across parts of eastern Kentucky, and those a few little sprinkles right now moving closer to Pikeville. Uh, right along uh, US 119 and 23. We're zooming here a little closer and you can see this would be near Shelbyana eventually a couple of showers moving through all the way down toward Virgie, Wilwright and even over toward Jenkins. This is very very light a couple of sprinkles to deal with. What I'm watching though is showers and thunderstorms developing across parts of East Tennessee and far southern parts of uh, eastern Kentucky. This is Bell County, Middlesboro, Hazard and Pikeville just to give you an idea of where we're looking. And all this rain is trying to make its way toward the north and to the east. And if it holds together, we could very well see a few rain showers make their way right here into eastern Kentucky over the next couple of hours. So that will be something definitely to watch. And as a matter of fact, this rain is actually prompting a couple of flood advisories in parts of uh, southern Bell County and east Tennessee. So we'll watch this through the rest of the evening. And we'll, of course, keep you up to date. Just keep checking on the Facebook page of East Kentucky Broadcasting Weather for the latest information on that. Temperatures right now, 81 in Pikeville, 82 Prestonsburg, Williamson, 81 in Paintsville, 80 in Inez, 72 a little cooler in Dorton, and 76 right now in Whitesburg. What I'm really watching for the overnight hours tonight, if you look right here, you're going to see a little spin. It's a little small little area of low pressure that's trying to move off to the north and to the east, and that could influence our weather overnight tonight. At the same time, we do have a cold front making its way from Chicago to St. Louis to Oklahoma City. This is going to be bringing in some much, much better weather here over the next 24 hours. We have to look at the dew points. It's been very warm, very muggy. This is a look at uh, temperatures where it would take to get to 100% saturation. It, right now we're in the 60s. That means very warm, very muggy. But the cooler, comfy air, well, that is moving into the east. It will be here by the middle part of the week. Of course, tomorrow, a big day, Election Day. If you're heading out early tomorrow morning, temperatures in the mid-60s by lunchtime, mid-70s, and near 80 degrees. I think the best chance for any rain tomorrow will be before the lunchtime hour. All right, your pollen count for the next couple of days, Tuesday, 6.0 in the moderate category and back toward the high category as we head into Wednesday and Thursday. Very comfy seven-day forecast. 82 for tomorrow, but 74 Wednesday, 72 on Thursday, 72 Friday, 78 on Saturday. And some of the computer forecasting models say that 72 on Friday may be a little bit on the warm side. Some of us may not break out of the upper 60s. So some cooler air with overnight lows in the 40s on the way. Mm. So Get is ready it safe for it. to say this might be Blackberry winter that we've talked about? I think it's very possible. This could be our Blackberry winter. Finally getting to it. Finally here. <laughs> All right, Lincoln, thank you. We'll be back with sports in two minutes. Well, 
Well, Jamie, it is exciting time. It's postseason time throughout the area in high school baseball and softball. Yeah, our final sports season comes to an end for the 2014-2015 right. season. And before you know it, right back in it for football. <laughs> As high school students don cap and gowns for graduation, some will also be wearing their baseball and softball uniforms for the final time this week as postseason baseball and softball district tournament action begins statewide. Here are the matchups locally beginning tonight. We'll start in the baseball side of things. The 59th district tournament as Shelby Valley will face Pikeville at 730. The winner will meet Eastridge for the 59th district title on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. You can hear tonight's action of the 59th district tournament on 93.1 WDHR. Also tonight, the 60th district tournament begins at Pike Central with Phelps taking on Lawrence County at 6 p.m. followed by Belfry and Pike Central in the nightcap tonight. The 60th district championship will be played on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Heading north to Inez, the Sheldon Clark Cardinals will host the 57th District Tournament beginning tonight at Cardinal Park. The Cards will meet Johnson Central at 6 p.m., followed by McGoffin County taking on Paintsville. The 57th District Championship will be played on Wednesday at 6.30. Tomorrow, the 58th District will begin their postseason baseball action at W.J. Turner Field at Drift with Betsy Lane facing Allen Central, followed by South Floyd taking on Prestonsburg. Their championship game has also been moved to Wednesday night. Complete coverage of the 58th District Tournament can be heard on Classic Rock 103.1 FM beginning tomorrow evening. Postseason softball action also begins tonight in the 58th District at Mini Ballpark in Floyd County. Winless Allen Central is facing Betsy Lane as we speak, followed by Prestonsburg taking on South Floyd later tonight. In the 59th District, Shelby Valley will meet East Ranch at 6 p.m. followed by Pikeville on coming up on Wednesday. That will be the championship game. You can hear the 59th District Softball Tournament right now on ESPN 95.9, 104.5 FM, your home for ESPN Radio. Now the 57th and 60th District Tournaments begin tomorrow at Sheldon Clark. The 57th District matchups feature Paintsville taking on Crosstown rival Johnson Central, followed by Sheldon Clark and McGoffin County. The 60th District Tournament at Pike Central tomorrow night features Phelps going up against Lawrence County, followed by Belfry and Pike Central. Moving up to the college level, the UK softball team clinched their third straight appearance in the NCAA Super Regional Tournament with a victory over Notre Dame coming up at South Bend yesterday. We'll go to the video now. Cats down by one in the top of the fifth inning when junior Nikki Sagerman gets into this one. This would tie the game 2-2. Cats going for the weekend sweep of its South Bend of Northwestern, Ball State, and host Fighting Irish. Notre Dame, though, would fight back ahead 3-2. And then on to the seventh inning will go UK's Griffin Joyner. Well, a lot of celebrating here. All right, the single to right field. One run would score. That ties it up. And then the go-ahead run will score on this bobble. Kentucky advances to the Super Regionals where they'll face Florida this Saturday in Gainesville. Cats beat the Irish 4-3 to three yesterday. Reds were trying to save face yesterday hosting San Francisco after winning game one of the four-game series back on Thursday and putting together a modest three-game winning streak. Cincinnati starting to go in the wrong direction. We'll pick this up in the seventh inning. Jay Bruce. His second home run of the series. Reds are down one. Bruce trying to turn things on. He's still hitting under 200 for the year. Johns, though, had an insurance policy in Brandon Belt. His third home run of the series. That puts the Giants back up by two. Closer San Diego Casilla threw nine pitches to strike out the Reds of the ninth. That's three for each hitter if you're scoring at home. Giants will take the series win. Nine to eight, Reds are off tonight. They'll go to beautiful Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City for a sweet two-game series beginning tomorrow night. We'll look forward to it, Jamie. Thank you. All right. Stay with us. We'll be back in just two minutes. Well, Nathan, uh, maybe one little shower. We still have a chance of picking up some rain overnight tonight. Everyone's <laughs> hoping for more <laughs> rain, but the temperatures tonight in the mid-60s. 30% chance of rain, mainly during the first half of the day tomorrow, 82 degrees, and then, boy, oh, boy, we cool down. Overnight lows in the 40s, highs in the 70s the rest mm. of the week. Wow. Very nice. All right, Jamie, what's coming up tonight? 
New show, Hidden Damage with attorney Ira Branham. We finish up here. Very good. Okay. That will do it for tonight's EKB Evening News. Remember, you can get more local news anytime by listening to the radio stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting. You can also follow EKB News and EKB TV on Facebook and on Twitter. We leave you tonight with a view of the Eastern Kentucky skyline. Good night, and remember to vote tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching.